Bernard Schumer wrote the book Architecture and Disjunction between the years 1975 to 1991. It includes a series of essays divided into three main categories, architectural paradox, program, and disjunction. In the first section, he discusses how architecture affects human interaction with spaces. He also notes that physical interaction or intervention between people and space is intentional and not merely by accident. In the second section, he explains how people break a space's natural balance, creating an event, action, and violence. Without this disturbance, he claims that architecture could not exist. The final part focuses on disjunction. The book is thought-provoking and has a unique perspective on architecture in relation to the movement and interaction rather than form and functionality. According to Tom Porter, the author, the author of ArcSpeak, disjunction questions traditional architectural search for the accentuation of unity, harmony, and synthesis in favor of a post-humanist stance that disrupts coherent architectural form and challenges the principles of its composition. Therefore, disjunction is the attempt to deconstruct the traditional components of architecture for their painstaking resembly to new kinds of architecture. Even though Bernard Schumi's theory of disjunction highlights a new concept of transgression architecture it, that breaks away from the norm, his theories of violence and discourse between structure and humans are not practical for society's functionality. Jeffrey Kipnis emphasizes how, unlike his peers, Schumi from the outset of his writings formulated an essential conjecture for the incentric theoretical role of building. Architecture is the materialization of concepts. Kipnis's reflection on Schumi's theory suggests that he holds theory in high regard to architecture, since Schumi contributed to architectural theory, which notes his definition of architecture revolving primarily around theory rather than practice. He is not wrong that the theoretical role of buildings is significant, however, practice is just as crucial. Schumi's structure, however, highlight the theories discussed in his book. As his architecture adapts and amplifies the activities that recur within them, the interaction of spaces, motions, and events also alter and extend the within structures. His articulation of events in space aims to create a violence or a sort of conflict that results in a pleasurable experience, which is evident in the Parc de la Villette. George Hazelrig expresses how the park requires people to move as it enables different perspectives and experiences to form through one's movement. He gestures to how the success of the park stems from the remarkable array of programmed activities and private moments that it affords, which follows Shumi's intentions and ideology of how architecture is formulated through the occurrence of events. Shumi's ideas of architecture are highly critiqued due to his strict adherence to the formalization of concepts. Thomas Hahn wrote in the MIT Press his thoughts on architecture and disjunction. He says it's horrifying to imagine that architects might use this book, as they did its illustrious predecessors, to derive yet another book of rules. Untold mischief would follow. He defends his strong stance by explaining that Schumann's designs are primitive and lack truly architectural pleasures created by light and show, color and texture, expansiveness and enclosure, rhythm and incident. He disagrees with Shumi's fixation of a set of rules that are transgressed. This idea is reiterated in Jeffrey Kipnis's journal, Our Chances, how Bernard Shumi's retrospective quietly reaffirmed the case for architectural conjunction during the summer of fundamentalism. Although Kipnis's book mainly agrees with Shumi's ideas, the author is still able to point out the fault in his work, saying perhaps the fault in relation between Shumi's theories and buildings, if indeed there is one, lies somehow in his strict commitment to the direct materialization of concepts rather than a pursuit of production of effects. This aspect is one of the most debated as some people enjoy the conceptualization of theory while others think it's too radical and actually deteriorates from aesthetics. The Parc de Villette is an example of Shumi's commitment to the materialization of a concept. In this project, he organized 35 red follies in the intersection of a grid. As shown, the park does not consider nature, which is seen as a fault to it critiques. Everyone is familiar with the term modernism. From Le Corbusier to Frank Lloyd Wright, modernism brought about dynamic changes in the realm of architecture. 
Modernists are also rationalists and functionalists. However, while analyzing Shumi's works, theories, and texts, we came to a realization that Shumi's postulation of disjunction directly counters and challenges the notions of modernism. Modernism is a major movement that, according to Joseph Godlewski, forever changed the way we conceive of the world. So we find it of great importance to compare these two influential concepts. In Jane Lamarck's book review on Shumi's architecture and disjunction, she asserted that Shumi's theory puts him in direct opposition to those who maintain modernist convictions about form following function. Unlike modernist thinkers and architects who focus on a consistent, formal language and utilize technology and mass production to build structures that have similar established typology, Shumi employs other techniques in the pursuit of an architecture that displaces, dissenters, and disjoins to make new relations as well as new subjectivities possible. Additionally, Lamarck provides examples of Shumi's projects such as the Kansai Airport and La Fresnoya Turkoing to argue that these places can become host to an unlimited number of unplanned events where the border between space and event is blurred and where life is not exhaustively determined by a functionalist architecture dedicated to the proposition that there is only one set of appropriate behaviors for a space. Most importantly is the Parc de Lavalette designed by Shumi, which acts as the built manifestation of his theories on disjunction. This is similar to the Villa Savoy, which was the built manifestation of modernist ideology. The building's system of lines, points, and surfaces are designed to be independent of each other, and each constitute an autonomous system, and when Shumi superimposes these independent systems onto each other, Lamarck argues that it refuses any privileged system of organizing elements. She concluded that the independence of the three superimposed structures avoided all attempts to homogenize the park into a totality. One can compare this to the Maison Domino, which was a construction model that provided design guidelines which architects can follow to build a structure that was a machine for living. Although this theory is significant in its own right, this modernist theory of an established system, mode, or diagram of building design that focused on reason, rationality, and functionality is not Bernard Schumi's cup of tea, as his theory of architectural disjunction is more specifically in favor of disassociation or analysis. His theory refutes the traditional ideas of use, function, and form in favor of superimposition and juxtaposition. Shumi's theories imply the physical intervention of human in a given space, thus destroying its order and natural, natural structure. The link between architectural theory and architectural practice is crucial, but his book's theory is determined and challenging to put into reality, reality for the functionality of society. Patrick Schumacher sums up the reality of Shumi's theory in which Shumi's distinction is interesting but un untenable, not least because all three roles distinguished here translator, critic, innovator, must all come into play within an un ambitious, progressive architectural practice. There is no choice possible between them. Schumacher's insu insinuation highlights how disjunction in architecture is exciting and new, but there is no support or functionality behind it that de makes it defendable. In trying to strive away from mo modern forms of architecture, Shumi overcomplicates architecture's relationship between human space, yet creates a stimulating experience.